I'm Valerie Holliday, and I am a member of the faculty in the Tulane School of Medicine program in Medical Ethics and Human Values. I think the reason why I'm so attracted to medical ethics and medical ethics education is because, I mean, particularly as the way, uh, as we have seen in the last uh, calendar year, the way that medicine and medical professionals are really at the border of um, what's possible in terms of where our country can go and, and what it can reasonably do. Um, no other discipline that I've come across in my research or in my scholarship over the last uh, 20 or so years has given me to believe that there's any institution that can transcend politics. Until I came across medicine, my studies in philosophy um, let me uh, realize that politics is not an all-governing uh, proposition. Medicine does have a unique application. It is the intersection of science and humanities in a way that's not necessary to argue. It's very clear. And so I became drawn to it because I believe it's not only uh, proper for doctors and nurses to understand ethical principles and be able to apply them, it's also the case that I feel that medicine is situated to make some profound and significant changes to our culture by virtue of the fact that medicine lives in the humanities and the sciences. My own area of interest was originally in conspiracy narratives in America after World War II. My PhD and my dissertation are do make a study of film literature and television that illustrate the need to narrate conspiracies, particularly during the Cold War. We're not still in the Cold War, and so narratives have changed considerably. And while I am absolutely convinced that small, very circumscribed conspiracies do in fact occur on a regular basis, both inside and outside of government. It was my conclusion as the result of my research that large grand scale conspiracies are not really practical or logical that they really do happen. I have retained my interest in critical theory. Um, I used Marxist, feminist, psychoanalytic analysis to uh, explore conspiracy narratives in America. Um, now my interest has changed and shifted over the years towards medicine, and now I teach uh, bioethics to uh, would-be nursing students at Baton Rouge Community College. And I also teach uh, philosophy at Delgado Community College here in New Orleans and also at Loyola University here in New Orleans. My degrees are both from Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge and I have a Master of Arts degree in philosophy and a PhD in English literature. I was born in New Orleans and moved away when I was four to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Three years ago, I returned to take a position at Tulane University in the Dean's Office for about a year before returning to a faculty position. I have been trying to get back to New Orleans all my life. Um, it, this truly is a homecoming, a return for me. Um, I have needed to be in New Orleans all my life I belong here. Um, New Orleans is like a bodhisattva, uh, if you will permit me. The, the people who become enlightened and then give it up in return to go teach others. I have found my place and my peace in New Orleans because New Orleans is very permissive in terms of who you are and 
how different you are. There is a lot of room in New Orleans for a lot of different people. And there is room for me and I found some space and I now live in it um, with a great degree of comfort. I'm very proud to be a New Orleanian. I love being back. And even though in the last 10 months or so, things have been a little sedate in New Orleans because of the pandemic, but that's no matter. New Orleans knows how to celebrate, uh, something that I've needed to learn how to do in my life. And living here uh, has changed my outlook on the world and how things go. I, it, I have a strong sense of place. And New Orleans is a strong sense of place and I love it here. And I don't think I'll ever leave.